you talk about the IT infrastructures, just uh, for the hardware basic, computer categories and software basics. After that, we will go for the enterprise scale and the, uh, the, uh, the information infrastructure and also the application that you use. By the way, this one is applicable to the small, medium and large business. First of all, we, would, we will have to learn about the basic hardware. For the basic hardware in the computers or information technologies or IT, is any computer-based tools. What is the meaning of any computer-based tools? The tools that equip with computers. If it is not equipped with computer, it's not count as an IT. So the computer itself is the computer-based tool. Some of the office, they may have the tools or they may have the device that work similarly to the computers and it count as computers. Printer can be count as in, uh, information technology because some of the printer can do more than printing. So it's also count. But by the way, the IT, the department, the IT department may not need to know every single thing. So most of the big company, they, they should have the IT department in order to fix most of the devices and also both hardware and software. So for the hardware basic, in hardware, in computers, you should have first thing, input, output, process, and storage. Okay, our input, output, process, and storage. For input, okay, for input device, that is the device that allow you to input information, uh, input the data into the computers. All the input, most of the input will be appear as the keyboard scanner. Some of the input will be cameras. And also some kind of touch screen. Output, the device that shows you or receive the data or information from the computers. Basic information is about the monitors, printers, and also touch screen. Okay. That is input and output device. Process, that is a CPU or central processing unit. For the CPU, most of the time you will, you will, we will talk about the computer itself but this real CPU is only one chip inside the computers. That is called CPU. But frankly speak, some of the IT, they just ignore that because even though they try to use the right words, some may not understand that. So it's acceptable, but the main, pro the main progress or the main information of the central processing unit is to become a brain of the computers. When you have an input, when you have an output, you need to process. When you finish the process, you need to store it. There'll be two types of storage, primary storage and secondary storage. For primary storage, basically it is the memories that is very, very near to the CPU, okay, the memory. What is the meaning of near to the CPU? That is very easy to access from the CPU. Electrics are electronically connected. For example, it is called RAM and ROM, random access memories and read only memories. These two things, okay, these two things, they will attach to the main board and very near to the CPU. So the CPU can access faster. So when you get the new computer, most of the RAM, they will have something like eight gigabyte of RAM. 
but if you want to make the computer working for the graphics, it should be 16 gigabyte of RAM. But by the way, it depends on what? It depends on the, it depends on, on the business. If the business based on, <clears throat> if the business based, based on graphic, you might need to consider the storage to be bigger. But if it is about the something like office work, you may not need to increase the memory to be this much. So it depends on what it depends on the business itself to consider how much of RAM that you need. Next one, the secondary storage. The secondary storage is the device that you can take the data longer. So for the primary storage, when you turn off the electricity with your computer, or if in, in other words, when you close the computers, all the memories here, if there is no electricity, it will be gone. For the secondary storage, you can save it inside the device that even though you turn off, it will store. So for example, of the secondary storage is the diskette hard drive memory card CD. The hard, hard drive right now is nearly obsolete. It will be sold as state drive. What are the difference between hard drive or hard disk and solid state disk? For hard disk, you need the disk inside a box and then this in, in order to record something like the music, vinyl recording. But for solid state, there is no movement or there is no, uh, no parts that move, only electricity that runs through this device. So when you want to record, when you want to read or load the data, for normal hard disk, you need to wait until they found the data. But for solid state, the waiting time is shorter. So most of the computers right now, they offer solid state disk in order to make the computer faster. So in the hardware, if you want to get the computer that is fast, you might need to think about what are the usage of that particular device. If that device is for office work, the RAM or the primary storage may not be this high or may not be this high. It depends on the budget of each of the computers. But if you are going for further business, for example, uh, video editing, uh, something like software sharing or something like that, this one might be reconsidered. But for the business that need to store a lot of data, you might need to think about the secondary storage. Okay, you have to think about the secondary storage. What are those? So you might need to think about the high capacities of the diskette, high memory is backup. If you don't think about the high memory backup, you might need to store in some other places. External hard disk might be one of the choices. But by the way, most of the computers right now, you need basic devices. That is first one CPU, primary storage, secondary storage, input and output. But this one, communication device, as the computers right now, they need to connect to the internet. So in order to connect to the internet, the communication device should be divided into two parts. First one is wire network, and second one is wireless. So for the wire network, you might need to use the device called NIC card or network interface card for the Y, which you can connect with RJ45 or even the LAN cable. For the wireless, you need to connect to the Wi-Fi, which they have the same name of the card that is network interface card. 
but instead of RJ45, they connect with the standard of XO2.1. XO2.11, and then there'll be the alphabet in order to specify the speed. There'll be A, B, G, and G, and so on. So in the communication devices for the computers, you might need to decide which, which is wire or wireless. Depend on what, it depends on the business and also the flexibility of the office. If the office need to be moved so many times or the work is not on in the office so many times, you might need to think about wireless. Then the infrastructure should have the communication device that is the modem or even the router in order to uh, service that particular computer. So this is the basic, okay, this is the basic devices for the computers to be used inside the small business or even the big business. For the big business, for the small business, most of the time when you want to do the startup, most of the time I saw notebook, laptop, okay, laptop, and also something like embedded, embedded computers for the small business. For notebook and laptop is just for the basic stuff for the user to use because they need to move around. They, know, they have no need to use a PC. But for the embedded computers, what are those embedded computers? The embedded computer is something like the computer that need to be used on site. If it is the restaurant, the point of sales machine is embedded computers or the something like the screen, touch screen for showing the products inside the inside the department store that is also called embedded computers so for the startup they may talk about some type of the computers but some startup they deal with something more than just a notebook laptop they will go furthermore in the thing called server what is the meaning of server the server is the computer that service to any access from outside from the internet that is the server what the difference between the normal computer to the server the server need to be more tough in each and every aspect of the computers because server need to run 24 hours seven days that means always on so the cpu need to be tough Hard disk, secondary, and primary. Primary and secondary should be tough in order to sustain what? In order to sustain the uses or the service. Input communication and also input output device should be more, uh, more stable. Most of the server in Thailand, it will be divided into four or five brands but most of the famous brand will be hp hillet packard ibm okay ibm dell okay that is three brands that is very famous for the server is there any other computer as a server there'll be more and more depends on what it depends on the brand that they try to install or that they try to sell the product but these three i saw so many times for the servers so when you have the computers this is the video for you to understand more about the computer how the cpu is made how hard this is made most of the time when uh, the device or the material in order to make the cpu right now is silicon Equipped with gate, electronic gate, B 
because in CPU they understand only zero and one. For hard disk, they may make from the material that they can electricity uh, they can store electricity, or in other words, they can put the charge on it, so they can keep all the data. For the memories, as it is the electronic memories, they may have the capacity storage inside the computer. So if you watch this video, you will understand more of how to how the CPU is made. Yep. So computer categories in the book on page 149. This is the type of the computers. For the basic stuff, micro, mini, laptop, personal. These four right now they try to combine into one word that is computers before that they have to divide into microcomputer mini computer personal computer and laptop what are the difference between personal computer and mini computers is about the function of the cpu microcomputer they have the CPU inside, but the function is very low and limited. Do they still use it in the bank? In the bank, they still use microcomputer in order to input the data from the bank, the book bank, in order to search for the information, in order to input, input the transaction. And you may have the question why they don't just upgrade, update into newest and very fast computers sometimes when you want to update into the new type of computers the hardware can be installed very easily but the software itself is not compatible so they still use the thing called legacy legacy system that is the old type of the system some bank they use very sophisticated personal computer in order to do the mi micro computers process. They still use mini computer instead of laptop. Because of that hardware software compatibilities. If there is no hardware software compatibility problems, they can change from the normal computer into something like smaller or tablet. Right now, the computer may not call only computer, there will be smart device, smart device. For the computer, you need to have CPU, you need to have screen or embedded one into something like touch screen computers. Or in other words, all in one computers. Most of the all-in-one computers, they have embedded CPU or embedded uh, embedded parts that they need at the screen. So it is very easy for the business to move around or e even install into some particular parts. But there'll be smaller computers in order to use, or in other words, IoT. Internet of Things. What is the meaning of Internet of Things? Anything that connect to the Internet. Every device in the world that they can connect to the Internet is called Internet of Things. Basically, that you may see or you may use it right away is the refrigerator that can connect to the Internet. That is the basic Internet of Things, microwave that can connect to the internet, uh, washing machine that can connect to Wi-Fi. The weird stuff is the cup that can connect to the internet or the frying pan that connect to the internet. The reason of connecting to the internet is to search for the recipe, is to report what are on that particular device. So the Internet of Things is now in many, many devices in the world. Main purpose of the Internet of Things is to make it connected 
instead of guessing, they may have the equivalent of the knowledge to the search engine, to the Googles. So the Internet of Things, they try to eliminate the problem of unknown information. Next one, supercomputers. What is the meaning of supercomputers? High speed, extremely sophisticated computers that use for analyze the data. So in China, there will be their own supercomputers. In Europe, they also have supercomputers. The main thing is, of supercomputer is to calculate many, many uh, functions, many things. For example, the DNA of the human, they try to calculate more and more sophisticated equation in order to find the answer for that. So the supercomputer is needed to be in base in order to do some multiple tasks which human or the normal personal computer cannot do. For example, if you are a company that store a lot of customer data, you might need a server in order to store a data. But if you want to store and categorize and also analyze the data, you may not, uh, the one server may not be able to do that. So they connect multiple server. They connect multiple server into a set of computers. That means the supercomputer is multiple computer or multiple server that works simultaneously in one direction of the data. In NASA, they use supercomputer in order to calculate the the trajectories of the spaceship and also all the calculations. In China, they calculate all the data coming in and out into the societies. So the supercomputer will be used if the business need for a huge amount of computer computing uh, assets. But for the, hum for the normal startup company, they may have the way to use the power of the supercomputer by buying something like the service of the supercomputers. Instead of using or instead of investing from the company itself, you just rent. Because the supercomputer may not uh, may uh, may not have the ability to stand alone. So they need to share. So you can buy some part of the supercomputer and then or you can rent it in order to use that power. Something like the share resources. For last type of the computer category is the quantum computer. The information of the quantum computers. In the normal computers, we talk about zero and one, on and off. For quantum computers, we talk about zero until one. Okay, zero until one. That means you have to measure the data in between zero and one. And this CPU or the quantum computer they try to evaluate those information into the processing speed. Instead of zero and one, there'll be more and more value in order to calculate. So that means the quantum computer it has something like faster capacities, faster in speed. So most of the computer in the world, they try to reach this state of the computers. But why don't you use quantum computer in your personal computers? Because only one thing, the price, but not the price of making this device, but the price of maintenance. In order to run quantum computers, you might need to run in the, uh, in the vacuum chamber and also you need to use liquid nitrogen in order to cool down the processor. So it might take 
a lot more money in order to maintain those computers or computing capacities. By the way, there will be some company that invests into this type of computer in order to create a new kind of personal computers. But right now, we stick with the silicon or the normal CPU. For the quantum computer, they may use it with the very big company. Software. Software is a set of instruction that the hardware execute to carry out specific tasks. There be uh, there be three kind of the software: system software, utility software, and application software. For system software, most of the time you will see something like OS or operating system. The operating system is a, uh, is the software that control the hardware, especially the computer itself. The utility software is the software that try to taking care of the device that is smaller than computers. Yeah, that is smaller than computers. An application is the software that the other people or something like commercial use for some other purpose, for example, document, uh, Excel, PowerPoint. So there'll be three types of the software. So operating system software, there'll be several operating system. In the basic stuff, there'll be Linux or Linux, Mac OS, Windows, DOS, Unix. Most famous is Windows, Mac, and Linux. MS-DOS uh, actually is the backbone of Microsoft Windows. The one who invented it is the same person. But for Unix, okay, the Unix is another type of operating system. It's another type of operating system, but based on Linux and based on MS-DOS. That means it's text-based. But right now, there'll be more and more operating system because right now we have phone. The phone is smarter. When they have the smarter phone, they need more and more devices to be working together. So in that case, you might need to have the thing called the phone operating system. The basic phone operating system is Android, iOS, but if you go furthermore, there will be more and more on window phone. But the window phone is maybe obsolete already. So there will be only two operating systems for the phone. But for the server, because we talk about the computer, the computer has normal PC, notebook, and the server. So for the server, there will be more and more operating system for the servers. Red Hat, Linux, that also have the operating system. Next one is for the utility software. The utility software is for something like working with the, some specific tasks which need to be interact with the hardware. For example, file and data recovery. Sometimes when you break uh, break the data, so sometimes you just save the data into the USB drive. The USB drive was broken, so you might need the software in order to recover it. Or when you want to send a secret message, you might need to encrypt the data by using some of the software to encrypt. Spyware, adware, also count as the utility software. When you want to format something or when you want to uh, copy your hard disk, you need to have the software that interact with the hard drive. So for the utility software is the software that interact with the device of the PC or of the computers. Operating system is to interact with the whole computers. Okay, the whole computer or the whole server. Utility software is interact just for 
some part of the hardware. But for the application, the application may not taking care or uh, may not care about the hardware. They may care about the uses of the people. Most of the time, you have to think about the uses of the people may divide into website, okay, website, office work, and game. So the application or the software that is not interact much into the hardware is called as application. But by the way, in this in these centuries, most of the software and utilities they will call as app. So for example, when you want to install some program, they just call or oh, just install the app. When you want to install something, you just go to the centralized place and then you download. No need to install from the CD or some some kind of the storage device. Most of the time when you install system software, oops, Most of the time when you install the system software, some of the utility software will be bundled inside the operating system. For example, when you install Windows, you can format the hard disk, you can format the USB very easily because they bundle the utility software inside. But some utility software you might need to download. So in that case, it's called an app. So in this, uh, in these centuries, okay, in this time, they may not divide the utility software apart from application software because sometimes they work simultaneously. So we will call them as an app. So there will be two types, operating system and apps. <coughs> so if you want to do the graphic, you will have an app for that graphic. If you want to go for the communication, there will be the communications applications and so on. These applications, they interact with the computers and also they interact more with the human. So there will be uh, freeware. Okay, freeware is the software that allow you to use it for free. How can how can the software can be used for free? Some of the company they give you the trial version of the software, so you can try with that trial version, and then you can move on to the full version. And there will be commercial commercial software. The commercial software is the full function of the freeware. The commercial software you need to buy. Okay, you need to buy. For example, Microsoft Office, you need to buy. Some software you have no need to buy because it's not freeware, it is open source. The open source means the software that allows you to allow the developers or any other developer to develop something on top of that particular applications. So it will help you more and more in order to create new other application based on the basic application that they provide. So some of the software that is open source, most of the time is freeware. But if you try to make the open source more commercial, that means you can sell it. Because the open source can be free and can be sold. Depends on what it depends on the developer. If the developer think it is very, very uh, sophisticated enough to sell, they can make it as commerce. For example, when you want to make an application on mobile phone, Okay, if you want to make an application on mobile phone, what will happen? You need to use open source software in order to create an app. Then that app, you can decide whether it is freeware 
or you want to sell them. It depends on what it depends on the one who create. So there'll be more and more applications right now, both PC and uh, mobile. So for the enterprise, the enterprise is not thinking about that small scale. They, they might need to think about bigger scale. What kind of the bigger scale? The bigger scale in this case is about the infrastructures. The enterprise architecture includes the plan for how an organization will build, deploy, use, and share its data process and IT assets. That means in enterprise scale, they have to think about the information architectures, infrastructures, and applications. In other words, they think about the hardware, software, human. In other words, the IT guys. And also how they can use it. That is the enterprise thing about that because the enterprise need to relocate the resources in order to fulfill their project. Because the enterprise has one set of people, one set of the infrastructure, and also one set of the service, they might need to find out the maximum usage of each in order to fulfill the project. The enterprise might need to plan a lot more than just buying new computer, buying new computers. They might need to relocate the computer from the unused department. You have to relocate one IT guy in order to maintain this thing until some other thing happens. So they may have the plan for more and more. Especially most of the enterprise, when they want to keep the data, they need to keep it as secure as possible. So when they keep the data, they not, don't just keep the data in fact fat this or USB drive, they need to store into the server. And if there is something happened to that particular servers, they will ruin their own business. So they may have the thing called the recoveries. In the information, because all the information architectures, you might need to store a lot of data. Business need to store a lot of data. For example, the customer records. Imagine the bank, okay? Think about the bank. What are the data that the bank need to be stored? The customer data. The bank transaction. Customer record transaction. And also the uh, the others information. Imagine if something happened to the bank server, everything collapsed. That means no information. No information means the bank cannot give the service to the customer. The customer may think in the bad way. So they may have the in the way to maintain and secure all the data. The bank should have the backup and recovery for any situations. The bank should be 24 seven in data. The bank should be recovered from disaster as far as possible. And also they might have the information securities. So if anyone can go to the bank and then ask for the information of other people, they may have a lot of problems. So backup and recoveries, both hardware and software. Now we are stick to the bank situation. So the bank should have the backup. What is the meaning of the backup? The backup is an exact copy of the system information. When you run the bank, when the bank run the business, they have two system run simultaneously. One is running the normal, the normal processing, and another system also run and keep record. It is called backup. 
in the normal computers if you install one hardware and that hardware just broken your data will be lost but for the server okay but for the server or the computer that need the backup system they will have the hard disk in order to do the same thing as the normal one but only keeping the backup data or keeping all the data transaction from the normal transaction into the backup when the normal hard disk fail the backup will run to that particular system so the bank need the backup system some business they need the backup system in order to run 24 7. right now the new normal of the business they need to run 24 7. for example the web browser no the, the web service not the web browser the place that give the service of host and domain or in other words wix.com the wix.com server they have the backup system if some computer fails another computer run simultaneously and then they can do some kind of the maintenance later because human cannot withstand 24 7 but computer can so they should have the backup why they need the backup they need to try to eliminate the tolerance that is called fault tolerance fault tolerance is the computer system that decide in even and component uh, component fail a backup component or project can immediately take its place with no loss of service the fault tolerance means even the problem occur with one computer another computer just run and then no need to worry about the loss in service in, in other words they have the same computers run at the same time when the one fail another one run as the real that is called fault tolerance why they need that they need to give the service as much as possible okay they give they want to give the service as much as possible so the computer that computer should run 24 7 and some of the problem is how can they maintenance there we have the function called hot swap the hot swap means you can unload the hard disk and reload the hard disk without turning off the computers that it hot swaps if you want to use this function into your normal computers you need to check whether it's capable of hot swap or not because when you unplug something the computer understand that you unplug the software uh, the hardware so if you have the computer that can do hot swap you can take out the hard, hard, hard disk and then swap into another hard disk the computer will not may not shut down most of the hot swap function has been used in the server that means the server can run 24 7 without stopping and also you can change some defect hard disk or defect hardware from the server into another computers next one failover failover is a backup operation mode which the function of the computer component uh, assume uh, assumed by secondary system component when the primary component become unavailable what the difference between fault tolerance and failover the fault tolerance is to decide for one failure but failover is the system that decide for immediate something like the very fast swap okay very fast swap secondary system or in other words backup system so if you are the one who give the service to other people for the website and host you might need to connect to the internet all over the time 24 7. you cannot rely on one internet service provider 
you might need to internet service provider in order to connect to the internet. If one fail, you can use another one. It is called failover. But the P, uh, but the server inside, if you want to run simultaneously with the hot swap, you can use the word fault tolerant. But by the way, both words is also called the backup system. Why you why you need to divide into two? Because the situation of those two are nearly the same, but not the same. It's nearly the same. So it depends on the type of the business that you want to eliminate which parts. You want to make it 24 seven with the backup connection or you, they don't, you don't care about the connection at all. They, you care about the computer only. So it depends on what kind of the backups that you want to use. For disaster recovery, disaster recovery is a little bit more detailed than the backup because the backup is to run from one, uh, one place. Even though they have the disaster, uh, something like the earthquake or something like that, they're still running. So some of the site, this one, the disaster recovery may need to think about the location also for disaster recovery plan is the detailed process for recovering information and auto in it system in the event of catastrophic disaster such as fire or flood spending uh, spreading our disaster recovery is rising worldwide among financial institutions so in that case it's about the disaster if it is an earthquake something happens to the computers or something happened to the system you might need to consider about the disaster recovery plan. How can you solve the problem of the this uh, disaster? For example, <clears throat> in Webster University, if there is something happen in the Sha'am campus, they can move the student to Bangkok campus or make it online. That is disaster recovery. There'll be two words, hot site and cold site. Okay, hot site and cold site. For hot site, the separate and fully equipped facilities. Separate and fully equipped facilities. Seems like they have branch, so many branches and then they, com they can combine the branches. That is hot site. For cold site, they separate facility but does not have any computers. Cold site means the empty space, but easy for the company to move you to move the employee to work into that facilities. So, uh, for example, in during the time that Thailand have flooded, most of the company, they try to move the employees to another site with their own notebook and connect to the internet by Wi-Fi or something like 3G, 4G, so they can work or mobile unit. So that is also called cold site. The hot site is another place similarly to the same one, but no need to worry about bringing any other things except the human in order to resume the business. So for cost effective, the hot site and the cold site, the cold site is cheaper because no need to worry about the computer itself. The hot site, you need to install the computers and need it to be run when they need it. So most of the, most of the disco, uh, disaster recovery based on the money. If in that case, if, if there is something like a nuclear war, if there is a nuclear war, there should be the hot site and cold site for the business. For the cold site, they might need to use the empty space in order to work. But for the hot site, you need to have the equipped computer in order to work the same thing as the normal business. Information security. So in order to secure the information, you might need to make 
the manage the user access authentication and authorization and also updated antivirus software and patch it depends on operating system so if you use windows you might need to think about the antivirus software but if you use or uh, mac os or linux you may not think about the antivirus you may think about some other applications in order to protect the information because in order to protect our information security you might need to protect the information with the availability confidentiality and integrity in other words the information need to be confident need to be available and need to be accurate for what for the user to use that is information security if you can store the data but it's not available all the time you lack of one of the factor for information security for example you gathering the data in excel and you don't rearrange the excel in the matter that you cannot reuse that is not <clears throat> integrity and also is not available on time the confidentiality you have the file you save it and you store it with yourself that is confident but if you want to share to others you might need to set up something called a password into that particular file that is confidentiality so in information security you need to have three of those for infrastructures as we mentioned in the enterprise unit of the IT you might need to think about the infrastructure of hardware software and connection connectivity or telecommunication equipment in other words you need to think about five factors first one flexibility second one scalability reliability availability and performance so in order to think about those five you might need to think about the big company because if you think about the startup company the startup is small when they're small they're flexible they can scale easily reliability or availability the reliability that means the system can be trust <clears throat> availability the system are available and performance is fast enough for the small business in order to install computers most of the small business they do not want to install the pc they do not want to install personal computer or the desktop computers they would like to install the notebook or something like the sophisticated notebook instead of the sophisticated pc but depends on what it depends on the work it depends on the performance if you compare the performance between notebook and PC. The PC is better in the performance because you can install whatever you need and the cost is lower. So the performance will be one choice. But for the big organizations, when you want, when the big organization would like to buy something new, they might need to have a lot of things in order to consider which one is good for which department yep. so for infrastructure we consider all hardware software and network for flexibilities system must be flexible enough to meet all type of business change what is the meaning of all type of business change in the COVID-19 the business need to be smaller if the op if the company cannot do the flexibilities that means they cannot change from the normal walk in working to be work from home so they may lose some of the function of that particular system so that is flexibilities scalabilities how will the system can adapt to increase or decrease in demand that is scalabilities they can shrink down, they can expand based on the wants and needs of that particular function. 
reliabilities that is the function correctly and provide accurate information if you connect to the internet to the wi-fi for example you have three channel of wi-fi channel a channel b and channel c when you connect to channel a every time when you connect you cannot connect to the internet if you connect to channel b you always connect with this one and very speed very good speed in connection channel c you have the same as b but sometimes it cuts so you might need to select the channel that is extremely reliable you can relate on that is channel b that you can connect to the internet channel a you cannot connect you may not choose channel c you may connect if there is no other channel available you might need to connect to the place that you might have some defect or something like the information inaccuracy Availabilities, the rest read when the system can be accessed by users. So if the system is, ha they have availabilities, that means everyone can access anytime. That is available. So if you use mobile banking, and that mobile banking just disconnect because the bank has some problem with the mobile applications they are not available so they might need to think about the availabilities of that particular system performance measure how quickly a system perform clearly process and transaction that means the performance of that particular system so if you want to set up some project you might need to think about five of these for uh, features in order to set up those or in order to relocate the resources flexibility scalability reliability availability and performance you might need to think about those five in order to maintain the business for example if you want to install <clears throat> new computer room okay you need to install new computer room for uh, graphic design in order to learn new function of the graphic design. The flexibility, <clears throat> the flexibility means when you finish training, those computer need to be relocated to another uh, to another location in order to use. So you might need to think about what kind of the computer that you need, and also what the network that you need in order to connect. Scalability, that means you can increase or decrease on demand. For example, you want to install the computer room for the graphic design. So how can you scale up the size of the computers or you want to scale up the size of the training room? No need to worry about drawing the cable, you just install the notebook. So that is the way of scalability. Reliability, in order to connect to the internet, more and more reliable you might need to have the connection or connectivity that has separate network to be rely on availabilities that means <clears throat> you can access the internet or you can access the computer anytime that means when you want to install the training room you might need to provide the computer for the trainer for the trainer also that is availability and performance. If you want to set up the computer rooms or the training room for graphic design, the computer should be fast, but the network can, can no need to be fast. But if you want to teach the teach student about the network, so you have to think opposite. The network should be fast, the computer have no need to be fast. So that is the, the way you set up the infrastructure. You need to think all hardware, software, and network in five categories. Flexibility, scalability, reliability, availability, and performance. Applications. The application architecture de determines how applications integrate and relate to each other. So for the application, they both utility application and commercial use application. There will be open system and web service. Open system. 
for the web service, it contains the web-based data. Web service means it is on website. It is online by web page. <clears throat> that is called web service. For operating system, uh, no, the open system. That is a system that is open. What is the meaning of the open system? Uh, the open system is general software. Okay, general software or general applications that available. So in application, you can use the installed application or you can download the application. Both application need to be installed. So in applications right now, there'll be so many type of applications, web-based application web service applications, or even cloud platform. So what type of application you might need to consider in the big business? In the big business, you might need to install the software and you might need to install the server in order to do the web service. For example, Right now, you cannot connect to the canvas. The canvas is web service. Okay, the canvas is web service. What is the meaning of web service? The software that install or use online by website, that is called web service. The open system is another type of the system that you can install. It's nearly the same as the normal uh, the normal applications. But by the way, the application architectures, you have to think about how the business usage. If the enterprise need to be centralized in data, the easiest way to install the centralized data is to use web based because you can open the web browser and then you can use all the information inside. But some of the system, they do not want to be web-based. They want to be installed into some certain computer. They need to use the open system in order to install those. For example, the bank, they do not want to use the web service. They use the open system in order to install one computer with one software. And then you cannot use other software inside those particular systems. If you see the bank play some other software inside during the time, that is web service because you can connect to the internet to other network. What are the risks? When you think about the application, you have to think about the risks that is involved. If the risks involved, they may not select. For example, the bank, they may not use the web service in full function. They may use the web service in some partial function because the risk of hacking or the data leak or something like the vulnerable point from open or the service to others, they have some risk involved. So they may not want to use the web service to some of the system. But if it is something like Netflix, they can run both by their application and also open the website. Airbnb do the same thing. Pinterest, same thing. For the Microsoft Azure, this one is another type of cloud platform. Okay, it's another type of cloud platform. What is the meaning of cloud platform? It is the bunch of server for rent. So you can rent the space in cloud platform and install it as your own PC or server. Web service will allow you to get, to get the free space with the service of the website. So there will be many and many platforms for you to use. 
for the startup company, they may consider Amazon Web Service as one of the part of their business. Google Cloud Platform will be one of the parts because when they want to do the business, they have no need to install other software. They can use Google in order to run business. They can use Amazon Web Service in order to store the data and also run the business on that particular, particular server. If the small business would like to buy a server, you might need to pay a big money. But for enterprise, they can buy the servers. But the problem of the, the big enterprise, they may not worry about the money, they, may, they worry about the person who maintains. For the startup, they, they have to maintain it. If they buy it, they have to maintain it. Or they need the outsource to maintain those devices. So some of the startup company or enterprise, they do not want to waste the money on maintenance. They just rent from cloud platform, from the web service instead of buying or investing in the server, they just rent them. So when they rent, they outsource the resources into the system. So it will save more costs and also no need to worry about the IT. The IT will talk only for the internal computer fixing and then the rates of payment is lower than hiring the people who can do the server maintenance. So for the enterprise, they need to think about the information architecture. They may think about the infrastructure architecture and application architecture. In other words, they need to think about the information that they store, think about the way they work, and think about this, what software that they need in order to do the business. In small business, they have to think about this thing also, but in smaller scale, in smaller scale. But for enterprise, it will be a very big scale. So they, knew they should have the IT department in order to do all those things. Some of the IT department, they may not know about the I information architectures. They may have another department in order to take care of one part of the architecture another department in order to take care of another part of the architectures and another department in order to take care of the architecture, but they call all those into IT guy. That is about the infrastructure, information infrastructures. Okay. So in these pictures, information infrastructure, business content, content and user, and then they have the word AI. Because right now, AI is one of the computer program that helps people, that helps human to analyze the content from the user and send to the business content. content. So if you use AI, that means you try to combine all those things into one direction, that is into the business content. <coughs> but by the way, it is about the data. It is about the backup. So sometimes AI is just the software, right? So if there is some problem with the computer, the AI will be gone without the backup. So any questions? Uh, no, no questions. Okay, I have a question for you. Based on, basic hardware. Could you give me the specification of your computers? Uh, my CPU um, runs at 
2.3 gigahertz. Um, I have eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh -huh. uh, I have a hard drive that I think is 500 gigabytes. Uh -huh. um, my input devices are uh, my mouse, my keyboard, and so, I have built in so microphone. So you have PC or notebook? I have a, a, I have a laptop. The laptop, okay, the laptop. So input device, output device that is the is attached to the computers. So it's count as both in and out. Do you have the touch screen device? No. No, that means the input and output are separate. So communication device in your notebook and your laptop. I think it's got a a Wi-Fi um Wi-Fi. Do you have Bluetooth? Bluetooth? Yeah, it has Bluetooth as well. Okay. NPR, uh, how you call it? The near NFC, near field communication. We have NFC. Do you have RFID? No. No. Okay. NFC. Do you know NFC? Yes. Near field communications. If your computer has near field communication, it's going to be weird because when you want to use something, you need to bring your notebook or laptop and scan. So most of the NFC will be stored into your mobile phone instead. Right. Okay, what's the difference between laptop and notebook? The function. How? What it's used for. So what is the laptop? What is the notebook? What are the difference? I think laptops were um, have more processing power and are more versatile. Actually, it's opposite. Oh, <laughs> because the laptop, the the beginning of the mobile computers, the laptop and notebook for the laptop, as it say, lap. That means you can use on your lap. It should be small. It should be easy to carry. The pro the processor should be small. Uh, should be not that fast. But the notebook you can put it on top of the table and then use, and no need to move around that much. That is notebook. But right now, it's try to be mixed up. All the computer will be smaller and smaller, so notebook and laptop will be nearly the same. But there will be another kind of the computer that is called Chromebook. Do you know Chromebook? No. Oops. What is a Chromebook? Chromebook or netbook? My gosh, my pen. The Chromebook or netbook is the some uh, some some features same as the laptop small in processor but the notebook uh, the netbook and the chromebook is the same thing as the computer but small and lower in the processing unit easy to use good for browsing website just for normal just for normal talking business but if you want to go for gaming or uh, if you want to go for some other high high processing capacities, you cannot use Chromebook or Netbook. Most of the school they want to use Chromebook and Netbook in order to learn, not for other things. That means if you use Chromebook or Netbook, you can use it for web browsing uh watching youtube and also learning from the application on the website 
but not capable enough in order to play games. So most of the school, they will provide the netbook or the Chromebook to the student instead of giving them the notebook because they cannot do other things than learning. Crap. Last question. In operating system, okay, in operating system, if you have the computer without operating system, without operating system, what will happen to that computer? You still got uh, the DOS program. Is DOS operating system? Is that an operating system? It's not really an operating system. What is the DOS stand for? The word DOS. Uh. And it shows here. MS DOT is operating system. DOS stand for this operating system. Oh. So Microsoft MS stand for Microsoft DOS operating system. MS DOS that is Microsoft. So the operating system that is installed into the computer, even though it's just the text or something like input, and then you see you you want C drive. If it shows C drive, they have an operating system. If you don't have operating system, if you don't have the operating system, that means when you turn on the computer, will not know what are the computer is about, what are the CPU, what are the RAM, what are the keyboard, what are the thing they don't know. They may see no operating system and then you cannot use. So when you buy a new computer, basically, basically they will install the basic MS-DOS or the Linux or Ubuntu. If you talk about the Linux, there'll be multiple distribution. What is the meaning of distribution? In other words, the Linux has multiple versions because the Linux is open source. And then when they have open source, as I mentioned, open source is the software that they can, the developer can create new and new things based on the operating system that is Linux. Basically, the Linux has no user interface, no icon, just text same as MS-DOS, but they, the developer try to develop more and more in graphic, in graphic user interface. There'll be more and more in the GUI. They try to compete with Microsoft Windows. Linux can compete with Microsoft Windows based on the vulnerable point because Windows has bigger vulnerable point than the Linux. In the case of virus and also spyware. But for usage, Microsoft Windows win in any directions in the usage. Even though the Linux try to develop the Ubuntu or the user interface function of the Linux. But for the higher server, higher service or the server, most of the server in the world they use Linux because the Linux can be used in both text base and interface and the server, they need only the text base in order to control and do all the stuff. And there'll be so many distribution. What is the meaning? There'll be so many brands based on the Linux. Red Hat is one of the brand 
okay, one of the distribution of the Linux. They use Linux in order to create the infrastructures of the operating system for the server. So the server can do multiple things. They can create the server as the web service. They can create the server as the any kind of the server that they want. That is the Red Hat capacities. Mac OS also create the operating system for the server. Both Microsoft Linux, uh, Microsoft Linux and Mac OS, they, are, they also have their own server version of their operating system. But have you ever seen Mac server or Macintosh server? In the, in the market, okay, in the market, in the business, they do not want to invest in a Mac OS server, even though they have a very good interface and sophisticated work because the cost or the price of the Mac OS and the, the, uh, the computer itself is too expensive. So instead they use other servers instead. Okay, any other questions? No. No? If you have any question, you can email me, okay? but right now the connection, okay, the connection software and the canvas, they are not available right now. So right now I cannot access to that particular servers. Can you access to that one? Uh, the connection. No, it doesn't seem like it. So there'll be the, e I, I received the email maybe yesterday or the day before that there'll be some problem with the canvas uh, Webster server. So you might need to wait for some time, but everything you downloaded already, right? Or you just have um, the application still works. Application on your mobile? Yes. Okay, that's fine. Because my application is not working. So I don't know why. Okay. I think that's all for today and see you on Tuesday, one o'clock. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thursday. Uh, Thursday, Cap. It's okay. Thank you. Cap. Uh,